Hello everyone, I'm back with the next episode of my Jewel 5 challenge and in this episode we try to land on Bop and Paul and then hopefully return home. This should be the last episode of my Jewel 5 challenge and although certainly there's still quite a bit to do, we've definitely done the hardest parts as in getting to an arrow breaking at Jewel and then landing on Relaith and Tylo. Those are definitely the hardest parts. Now we just have to focus on the two smaller moons on the edge of the system. At the moment you're watching me sort of all sped up, trying to decide what to do next. I would noticed I was running out of fuel a lot faster than I thought. I thought I had a bit more fuel left in my rocket and as you can see, there's not too much left to get to Bop and Paul and then home again. So I made the brave decision, completely unplanned and <laughs> spontaneous, to do the whole next stage of the mission using the EVA pack. I'm not looking back now, I'm just going to commit myself. If this doesn't work, then oh dear. But yeah, using the EVA pack, hopefully there's enough force to slow me down and then land. Now all of this, I had never done this before and so things don't go well if I use time acceleration. My Kerbal uh, like revolves a bit and spins around, but ultimately we managed to slow down. Hopefully, I didn't test it out, but hopefully there was enough uh, thrust in the jetpack to actually escape Bop. There should have been. I mean, it was enough on Val, but um, I had no idea about getting into orbit and then actually rendezvousing with the craft. But you can see we've definitely made a nice, pretty safe landing. We're coming in slowly, and there we go. Pretty soft. We didn't even hit the floor too hard. That's quite nice. We're on Bop, the home of the Kraken, and so far things have gone pretty well. It's now time to look at the nice views and admire the odd stuff on the map view there, we can see things aren't quite right but more importantly plant a flag and collect some extra science. As I've mentioned previously I'm not going for too much science in this mission, I've already got plenty but it, we may as well take some samples and of course plant a flag. Yeah this certainly was an unconventional landing, I've never done that before, not even um, with other um, things I've played in Kerbal, not for Minmus or anything, but I've heard that it works, and so I sort of thought I'd give it a go. You can see I didn't even get my ship into a perfectly um, inclined orbit, so there's going to be quite a bit of stuff to do. Using a little jump, I managed to give myself a little boost, and the EVA pack certainly has enough to get me quite high up but you can see I'm running out of fuel pretty quickly. The EVA pack only has five units of fuel capacity and it doesn't burn it too slowly either. You can see there's definitely enough to get in orbit, but rendezvousing with the craft, I don't know. So yeah, I end up switching to the actual rocket and as I mentioned previously, in other episodes I've incorporated a probe core into the design so that I can control it without the Kerbal inside, just in case something like this happened. Also, really, I mean really <laughs> annoyingly at BOP was the fact that you can't time warp properly. You can only do physics warp because it won't let you go into um, warped time unless you're like 25 kilometers above the surface. And for a planet, well, a moon that small, it seems unreasonable. So I had to do a lot of my waiting around on orbits just in four times speed, which took a very long time. The same isn't true for poles, so I don't know what's happening there at BOP, but oh well. It's perhaps just because of how um, uneven the surface is and you might hit a mountain or something. Anyway, we end up getting a pretty good encounter, although you can see in order to speed things up I get an encounter as soon as possible rather than doing multiple orbits at that slow speed. But you can see if I leave my current trajectory, I'll smash into the moon's surface. So I'll have to rendezvous with Guston and then quickly correct my orbit so that I don't explode. But with the lack of too much gravity, uh, that certainly wasn't too hard. Nuclear engines are efficient, so yeah, and they do still have a fair amount of thrust, especially which is fine on this sort of situation. You can see I've sort of rendezvoused, but there really isn't much fuel left. You can see I have less than one unit now, almost at the cockpit. 0.03 units, this is possible. But at the time, I was I was feeling pretty nervous. I mean, this is definitely going to be tight. I've put myself in the optimal position, the capsule's coming in. Switching back to Guston. EVA pack activate. 
almost, and there we go, we're out of fuel. We've run out of fuel in the EVA pack. Now, <laughs> that is certainly a bit of a problem. Yeah, I was sort of ah, very nervous at the time. I There's not really much more I can do. So, I try my best to sort of push the capsule into his face, hoping that <laughs> something would happen. At the time, I was definitely sort of kind of nervous, a little bit anxious about what would happen because this mission did take a lot of planning and it would be a shame to not retrieve Gustin. Also, the contracts that we've completed require Gustin actually returning because we don't have an antenna, but ultimately we managed to get the cockpit right in his face and we can grab it and there we go, a celebrating, celebrating whatever that was. <laughs> of the camera there, but, oh wow, that was certainly a relief. Now we can focus on landing on Paul and then getting out of this system before it kills us. That was certainly a tricky maneuver, and the tightest thing, well actually, you can't really call that tight because it was beyond tight, because there wasn't any fuel left, we'd run out of fuel. That certainly was pretty, pretty lucky. If I hadn't put the probe core into my ship, then uh, Gustin would be left drifting away forever. Look at that, we can even see the flag below us. The mountains do certainly reach up quite high on Bob. Bob and Paul seem to uh, simulate sort of captured asteroids in the dual system, similar to how Jupiter has many moons that are much smaller than the main uh, four middle ones, uh, in, inner moons, sorry. The uh, Jupiter actually has so many moons, uh, many more than I realized. It has about 67 and Jewel only has five, so it would be cool to see a few more uh, to simulate that. And also the moons of Jupiter actually have really varied sort of degrees of inclination and eccentricity. Some of the moons have inclinations of almost 90 degrees, so they're in sort of polar orbits around Jupiter, and others are in sort of 180 degree orbits, so that means they sort of absolutely orbit the planet the wrong way around, sort of backwards. Anyway, we finally use a maneuver mode to get an encounter with Bop. Oh, sorry, Paul from Bop. And the plane change I did, I don't know if you saw that, I did that at my apoapsis around Jewel because I've since doing some other missions found out that that's the most efficient way to do it with some help in the comments. So there we go, a Paul encounter, not too bad at all. Now that we're so far um, on the edge of the Jewel system, the burns don't require too much to make a big change. And here we are, we're here. The, again, since Paul has even less gravity than Bop, after being able to pull off a certainly risky EVA maneuver, things should be a little bit more safe on Paul. Also, I can time warp around a lot easier, and that'll certainly um, reduce me getting impatient, which probably caused what happened just then. Again, I, sh I sped up a lot of what happened at Bop just there. But in, as it was happening in real life, there was a long pause as I just sort of stared at the screen looking at him drift away. Sort of, just sort of, I don't know, just wondering, hoping there was something I can do. As I said, I haven't used any quick saves in this mission. So I've just got to say that was certainly quite lucky there at the end. But there we go, we're in a much nicer orbit as well, just to, minimal, just to minimize EVA fuel needed to be spent. Uh, getting into a good orbit, and here we go, we can now just burn retrograde. Also getting into a really uh, nice equatorial orbit allows me to focus and use the rest of the galaxy as my sort of reference point, that's where I know I should burn at, because that is definitely sort of pointing either retrograde or prograde. I won't have to worry about burning in the slightly wrong direction. Even though my orbit skews a little bit, I end up staying down pretty nicely much nicer than a bop, and I land pretty well. We also uh, land on a very flat area, so we don't have to worry about landing on a sort of rocky ground too much. And yeah, it serves as the last planet in our Jewel 5 challenge, and is quite a success. You can see from here we're easily going to do it, we haven't even spent half of our fuel. We're in a much better position as bop, but you can see, look, we can actually see the ship uh, from the surface in orbit there, which is kind of cool considering how small Paul is. There we go, after some sort of running around on the surface to get a much sort of flatter landing spot to plant a flag, we can then take some more science samples. At the end of this mission it would be interesting to see just how much science we do end up getting, 
because I haven't been taking any science gear with me, but we do have uh, loads of contracts and other things available, so it's certainly be interesting. Provided we actually get home, of course, but by this point in the mission, everything that would be considered hard has already been accomplished, and I've learned from that EVA catastrophe uh, how to do these proper EVA maneuvers. There we go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Paul, of course, is slightly yellow, but is not a lemon. It's called Paul because of the uh, supposed, supposedly it looks like a grain of pollen from uh, Kirby. I can see the resemblance, but there we go. After a sort of running leap, we then switch into the EVA pack and start burning towards the ship, burning into orbit. It's pretty cool, actually. It's not a bad strategy. I might use this more on small-scale missions, the EVA to orbit thing. It certainly reduces cost making a small lander. A bit of spinning in orbit. <laughs> and then we can finally use time warp, which is much nicer than how we had to wait around for everything on BOP. Again, you watch things at about, I think, 12 times speed for some of those weights, and I just had to sort of sit there. <laughs> but I didn't want to walk away from the computer either in case I missed something important. So yeah, just a tricky situation. Only after one orbit though, we come around a pretty good uh, encounter, a few hundred meters apart, and with the excess fuel in our pack of, mono of EVA fuel, we can easily uh, match up and meet up using just that fuel. We don't have to switch back to the rocket. And there we go, illuminated by our EVA lights, the rocket is all there. And with extra fuel, since we haven't had to land and deorbit and then reorbit the rocket to get to the planets, because we've used the EVA pack. This fuel should certainly be enough to get us back to Kerbin, and although I end up planning, you might see me creating some maneuver nodes to try and set one up. I initially planned to use a gravity assist from Tylo to get home, but since we have enough fuel, I figure it's probably best to just get into a dual orbit and then burn home normally, not using any gravity assist because it's, it takes quite a while to sort of set one up and look, requires some planning. And really, although it is more efficient, we don't need it. We don't need the efficiency because we've got more than enough fuel because of the fuel I saved on those two maneuvers. Yeah, now that we're in a dual orbit, it's easier to um, get home. I end up burning the wrong way there, and you can see my uh, apoapsis increasing. But there we go, our periapsis is now increasing to Kerbin. And we don't have to wait until Kerbin is sort of fully aligned with Joule, because the distance between us is so great that there'll be plenty of time to make corrections uh, on our journey towards the uh, more sort of closer planets towards the Sun. Yeah, this mission has definitely gone pretty well. I've never completed the Joule 5 challenge before, and I'm aware that it's a pretty big deal. Uh, yeah, it's certainly quite a nice feeling. By this point in the mission, not much could really go wrong. We've completed everything, and look at that. We can see all the flags on all the moons there in one shot. Really nice, actually. Certainly quite uh, proud. Guston Kerman is definitely a qualified hero of the Kerbal Space Program. And there we go. We roughly get across. We find a sort of sweet spot where the two uh, intersections sort of overlap quite nicely. And we'll definitely have to do some more tweaking once we get into a solar orbit. But we might there. Gee, there we go. We get a Kerbin encounter straight from Joule, and with only about 1.2 thousand meters per second at delta v, that should easily be doable just with our engines. Although you can see that we certainly don't have too much fuel left on the ship, considering how big it was to start with, with that giant sort of cylindrical column of fuel in the middle with all the external fuel tanks. We're sort of down to a sort of really uh, simplified version of our rocket now. Also, I've put, fitted a decoupler onto pretty much the whole rocket so that we only end up ejecting the crew capsule to make an uncontrollable but hopefully safe with the parachute uh, landing. It doesn't matter where we land because since we're only landing a, a capsule, we don't have too much mass to worry about, so the parachute should easily slow us down nicely. And there we go. We've now got a trajectory well into the Kerbin system and with a, quite a bit of fuel to spare. Quite nice actually. You can see now there are flags on every body in the map view except for Eve, which is where we're going to be going in the next episode. We've also got to land on Geely as well, and whilst it's pretty easy to land on an escape from considering it has such little gravity, 
Getting an encounter can be tricky due to its absolutely tiny gravity well. Anyway, we'll talk about more of that in the next episode and where we try to finish up this Karimo series challenge. But in the meantime, let's try to get to Kerbin. You can see here, I sort of attempt to get land on that landmass, but in the end, I give up. It doesn't matter, we'll still go slow enough even if we land on water, and I eject the whole bit. There we go, this is, you can see what I mean now. We've only got the capsule, but that's all we need. We didn't take any science gear. All we needed was to recover gust income. There we go, we're home, and there we go. After a very long mission indeed. Yeah, poor Gustin's been trapped in this sort of box for years and years, but finally he's home, he can see his planet again, and we're in the last few hundred meters of the descent now. Yeah, we're finally going to find out how much science we got from this mission. I'll do a similar thing for Eve and Gilly next time, I won't be taking any science here, but I'll see how much we get just from the samples we get from the surface. And here we go, we're on 20 meters, 15... 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, there we go, splash down! That was a truly satisfying moment considering all the sort of calamities I encountered throughout the series so far. We've had an explosion on the launch pad and that EVA sort of close call, but we're finally home. I don't really know what I'm doing here, I'm sort of rolling around to celebrate, <laughs> but in the end I end up recovering the vessel. The contracts also are complete. I don't know why it's taking a while to up update, uh, but yeah, we'll see how much we got. I'm expecting it to be about 2,000 and... 3,000! Oh, it's exactly 3,000. That's quite a nice number, actually. And that's certainly a lot of science. We don't need any of it, but it's nice to see. And plenty of funds, too. Uh, thanks for watching my Dual 5 Challenge. I'll see you in the next episode where I attempt an Eve and Gilly return mission. See you then!